Hi folks, today I'm going to be covering the soffits, the fascias and this eave setup that we've got here. So stick around and I will explain what I've done. So this is the first part of the roof where there's quite a bit of detailing to do. The main body of the roof was all about getting the membrane on and the battens. Down here there's a few different elements. You've got one is the soffit underneath, we've got the fascia on the front which all the guttering will hang on, and then underneath this bottom section of uh, the membrane we've got an eaves carrier or a felt tray which is going to support the membrane in between and also give us uh, a bit of a, a better heavy duty runoff underneath it. Now one of the reasons for that is because you don't really want this exposed to sunlight because it's going to degrade in the UV eventually. Also it's bright green and we don't want to see that from the road. But this is quite a good way to go and it gives it a bit of stability in between. Now I imagine these will get soft in the heat and sag a little bit but we're blocked under them as well. I haven't gone to the extent of doing the tilting fillets at the bottom of each rafter just because it's sat on top of the fascia here and by the time it's tacked in everywhere it really doesn't go anywhere. Um, and everyone I spoke to said that that would be a little bit overkill and not really necessary. We're also lapped over here and we want to make sure that this is going to hang nice and neatly into the gutter. Not going to be carrying water unless there's a catastrophic incident on the roof, so it doesn't really need to come into the gutter quite as much as the slates will, um, but we'll come to the slates later. And then finally you can see I've got this extra double batten at the bottom. My first batten when I laid out the roof was this one here, which is the top of the first full slate. Bearing in mind we want the bottom slate to end up 50mm or 60mm into our gutter down here. Here's a cast iron sample. We're using cast aluminium but we'll cover that in the future. But we know that this is going to sit probably about 10mm off on the brackets that we're using and you can see there it's hanging in just fine. It probably would have been easier here if we got the guttering on first, but because it's getting painted off site, um, I need to just wait for that and I can't really wait to slate. Right, let's have a look at all the timber work. So with the soffits and the fascias all painted down in the workshop, I could bring them up and with the help of Gary, who's been helping me uh, one or two days a week, we could get these fitted in fairly long lengths to minimize the number of joins. The soffits are fitted up to those blocks, which are nice and level, and we biscuit jointed just the ends just to keep things flush. And then when it came to the bay window, there are a few tricky angles to do, 
but we can get that all tidied around there nice and level and ready for the patients. With the fascia boards, I decided to do a scarf join there just so that I could put a block behind them anyway and minimise any chance of a kind of a gap opening up. I then did these in slightly shorter lengths because they could fit in my car, but I worked my way around the building in the same way as before. Once I was happy with the positioning, I then went along and had some stainless steel screws. Those are positioned so they go just into the soffit below and then I went along and secured them nice and plumb into the end of the rafters or into the blocks in this case. It wasn't perfect, but fortunately we're painting everything so any bits that need to be filled can be filled, sanded and ready for the last couple of coats of paint. Now the fascia height is quite important. We want to end up with a slight kick on the last slate. So what I'm doing to enable that is, instead of kind of just putting tilting fillets on the end of the rafters, the fascia board is slightly higher than the plane of the battens. So in this case, I'm actually using a batten to set the back edge of the fascia at 25 mil, which means the front edge of the fascia is a little bit higher. That's all it really needs, enough to kick that last slate. And it's in that position where you would have your over fascia ventilation if you were putting those strips along the top. The fascias, I was keen to do this as a restoration rather than a renovation, if that makes sense. I didn't really want to start using plastic or composite or metal up here. I went with exactly what was there before, which was a high quality, slow grown redwood. And what was there before lasted the 120 years that it was up here and most of it was completely solid. Where it failed was down to water issues on the roof rather than kind of the paint or the wood. Now under here you can see I've used a seven inch soffit or a 175 or it's probably 170 total. And then that's allowed me to scribe it to the stonework. The original one was square with lots of gaps up here, bird sized gaps. I probably ended up with a five mil gap all the way along which actually acts pretty much like a nice vent uh, to give a bit of airflow, not that we really need it. Then that is just secured up to some blocks which are on the rafters, which you can see me doing here. And then on top of that, on the front, I've added our fascia board. This is a, a 150 millimeter redwood fascia board. These were all pre-painted down in the workshop, but of course I then ended up with a load of screw holes, which I've filled, sanded, and it's now ready for another coat or two. Now, as far as the detail, all I did is a chamfer on there to match the barge boards. Now the barge boards were like this originally, albeit much thicker. The original fascias had a little bit of a bull nose sort of OG sort of molding going on, but this should at least give a good drip edge. And I've also taken the back edge off there. So there's no sharp kind of corners. This will hold the paint much better. And then the last of the soffits are these boards down here. Now these are much wider. They are 220, so nine inch uh, redwood. Again, they've had a couple of coats down in the workshop. Once they're fitted and it's a really nice dry day, that final coat I will get on and uh, it will probably take a few days to dry. This is the linseed paint. I'll be going into that in the future uh, in more detail. It's working out really well, loving the product, but this time of year, it is a little bit slow drying, so we just need to take that into account. But getting the two coats on down in the workshop was key. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned is that the rafters were a little bit all over the place. So on a couple of occasions, I needed to use string lines to stretch from one point to the other to straighten out those, see which ones were sticking out too far, which ones weren't sticking out far enough. And uh, any that were really protruding, I cut, plumb cut really nice and neatly to get them more in line. What I found actually is the blocks that I fixed onto the side, which would carry our nice level soffit and our plumb fascia board, could really kind of take out the discrepancies. So we could actually line the blocks up rather than having to worry about the rafters. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the done way of doing things, but it seemed to make sense to me. 
So get those all in line and then basically everything set off that. Then it means that our guttering should be nice and straight because there's not much give in you know, metal guttering. Certainly the cast stuff that we're using and also the first slates are gonna hopefully be a bit straighter this way. Anyway, that's it. This is a nice early start. I'm hoping to get some of the slates started today. I did a little test patch in the corner but one of the future videos, whether it's the next one or in a couple of uh, days time, we'll be getting started on the full blown slate work and uh, hopefully getting somewhere near the top and somewhere near weather tight. Good news is the membrane is holding out the vast majority of the water, but that won't last forever. And at the end of the day, we really need to get these slates on because it's November next week. Any questions on that, stick them down below and hopefully someone with far more knowledge will answer them for me. Um, yes, there are various ways of doing this, but at the end of the day, this is the way we've gone and I think it will be just fine. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.